action. Good afternoon to all our viewers from home, from wherever you're watching us from. Welcome to Yara Live event. Today we are off the office, we are off the courts, and we are here on the farm with one major mission to just show you, demonstrate to you that it's possible to get and improve your yield using Yara Crop Nutrition Solutions. And today we are all the way in Kitengela, a place called, uh, as, will be, as will be told by uh, our host today, who is a young farmer, very vibrant, came, set up his farm. You can see how beautiful the farm looks using Yara products and you'll be able to show us and demonstrate to us how his experience has been using Yara Crop Nutrition Solutions. But before we go ahead, allow me to introduce our teacher as, as always, Mr. Kefa Makori, the Yara East Africa uh, Regional Agronomist, who will take us through the bits and pieces to understand really how do we need to feed our onions to ensure that we improve our yield. Mr. Kefa Makori, welcome and take us through. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, our viewers. Uh, welcome to this session again of uh, Yara Crop Nutrition. Uh, I'll be able to take you through the journey of growing onion. Uh, onion is becoming a very important crop uh, uh, in our tables and also as a commercial crop. So today uh, I'll take you into through the journey. But before that, i just give you a brief introduction who Yara is. Yara Kenya Limited uh, is a subsidiary of Yara International that is uh, based in Norway. And the company has been... Uh, in the business of uh, production of fertilizer for the last one, more than 115 years. So what sometimes people don't realize is that the crop nutrition or the solution that we give is not only a fat, fertilizer or nutrients as such, but it's really a collection of research and uh, experience that goes back to more than 115 years. Very good. So, I believe everyone is ready now. Uh, welcome to the show. Now, I want to... The characteristic of this crop, onion is a shallow rooted crop and actually uh, the root system is not spread much other than up to around uh, 30 centimeters uh, uh, from the top of the soil. So everything that we do, we must ensure that all the nutrients that uh, we give this crop, we take into consideration the root. It doesn't have a very fibrous root system like a maize or other crops, but rather more of a, a very thin, shallow, and not very spread apart. For example, I have this crop here, this mature crop that I've just uh, uprooted, just to make you appreciate uh, that this crop is not uh, deep-rooted. All right, so this also will give us a direction in how much water and how often that we need to feed the, this crop. Again, some of the challenges becomes if you put too much water, then it can leach that fertilizer that you have put far and beyond the root zone. So it's always very important to understand uh, this crop. Now then, uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the, four so the, 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 uh, the four R's, which is uh, fertilizer placement, uh, fertilizer source, right rate of, uh, of uh, amount uh, uh, that this crop needs to feed so that you can be able to achieve uh, the yield and the quality. Now then, let's start. Uh, during the nursery, it's important to apply your, uh, your fertilizer, and in this case, uh, you put Yaramila power. Yaramila power is a very high, uh, it's, a, it's an NPK that's well balanced and high uh, in phosphorus. Right. So, uh, we understand the function of phosphorus is very important to establish a very good root system and also a very uh, 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 strong uh, crop during establishment. So, in the nursery, you apply 20 to 30 grams per square meter, rake it in, and seed your nursery. After that, then it's always important to come in and uh, fertilize your crop with uh, Yarabella sulfan, or uh, say on a weekly basis, to ensure that the crop continues to grow uh, uh, well. And as I said, again, this crop is very shallow rooted. It's important to apply small bits of nutrients after every short period of time. Then once now you've transplanted, now you come up with now the full Yara nutrition program, which is Yara Miller power for planting, that's 100 kilos. Uh, and then at, a, after, at around a four to five leaf stage, then it's important you come in with Yara Bella Sulfan, which is again uh, a very nutri uh, nutritious uh, fertilizer that high in nit nitrate, nitrogen, and sulfur. Then at about uh, uh, five to seven leaf stage, then you come in now, you start alternating Yara Mila Wina, which is a complete 
uh, NPK compound fertilizer with about 80 nutrients and very rich in potassium. But you all, now you also need to alternate with your, your liver nitrable, which is again a very important source of calcium, nitrogen, and boron. Right, now let me take you through step by step. So that was just a, a preview of what we are going to learn today. Very good. Now, I'll show you about uh, what I was talking about, the root system of this crop. It's not very it's not very deep. I hope you can see. Let me dig up just to show you and appreciate so that when you are looking at feeding this crop, you know how much you should feed and more important, how much water that you should be able to give this crop. All right. Now, I hope you can see this crop here. It's not, it's not deep rooted as I just mentioned. And if you look, uh, this is about maybe 20 centimeters uh, depth, so it can go further to about that centimeters uh, depth. So our root system, and that's the important root system, the final root system is concentrated, let's say in about uh, maybe 15, 10 to 15 centimeters. So this is the important area that we should always water, ensure that it's well wet, so that the nutrients can be taken up. If you give too much water, that maybe is going to go beyond uh, 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters, then what happens, the nutrients that we place here is going to go deep down, down beyond this, and we run the, the risk of reaching the nutrients. And this is not what we want to do. We want to make sure that the roots, which are concentrated here about 50 centimeters, they benefit a lot from the nutrients so that the uptake uh, becomes very efficient. And this is what we should be able to do. Now, as I said, now at transplanting, ensure that uh, you put in 100 kg of Yaramila power, which is again is a, is a very complete uh, fertilizer for planting. It has got all the nutrients that this crop requires, phosphorus, high phosphorus. Uh, it has got uh, potassium, it has got uh, nitrogen, sulfur, and some bit of magnesium, which is very important for better root establishment and a better strong stem establishment, which is very important. So that later, once you develop a good root system, the later the nutrients have become supplied, we are requiring that we have better efficiency of uptake. And as I said before in other uh, trainings, roots is like a mouth, okay? The more the roots you have, the bigger the mouth you have, and that increases the uptake of nutrients. And which is very key to ensure that you have a better, strong system here, and the more foliage and the bigger foliage, and even the height of the foliage, which is going to be very important later, uh, because this is the manufacturing site, this is the industry, all right? If we don't have a bigger leaf system like this, and we have a very small system, then it's like a factory uh, uh, that's not running to full capacity. Very good, so once we have done that, then it's always important to understand why we apply the nutrients uh, and the amount that we apply. So, at about, uh, so onion grows slowly from transplanting to about three leaves. Once the third leaf begins to emerge, then that's when you start seeing uh, the onion uh, growing very quickly. So and that's why we insist that uh, the second application of fertilizer should be between after the third leaf has emerged. So four to five leaves, if you're right, then this is the time the onion begins now, the roots are grown and it's beginning to uh, absorb, absorb the nutrients and the growth becomes very rapid. All right. And that now at that point it requires a lot of nitrogen and and sulfur and that's why we apply Yarabella sulfan which is very rich in nitrogen and sulfur. Okay, then as the crop grows now uh, again it grows in terms of the leaf size but also increases the number of foliage. Now it's also now thinking okay uh, at some point I'm going to start bulbing to start forming the bulb. So then again uh, at some before, at about five to seven leaf stage, then you need to start now applying Yaramila Wina, which I said before is a complete fertilizer with about eight nutrients, very balanced uh, with the primary, with secondary, and micronutrients. All right, and most people, by the way, they do not feed micronutrients, so they try to offer micronutrients through the foliar. But if you can do that through the fertilizer 
uh, as a top dress is very important. All right. Then you need to alternate with the uh, yara liver nitrable, which is complete water soluble calcium uh, with the nitrate, nitrogen, and boron. Those are very critical because now as we head towards bulbing, we need such kind of nutrients. Calcium will be very important, especially if you are harvesting your onion crop and you are not intending to sell. Then you're talking about increasing the shelf life or, or the storability of that crop. All right. Uh, but also it's very important to have the calcium in the plant because then again it really helps the plant to resist better against the diseases, against pests, chewing pests and things like that because it makes the cell wall of these leaves to be very strong and then that insects uh, don't find it easy to penetrate if they are chewing or sucking but also even in terms of the disease then the cells are very strong then they don't allow the disease to spread as quickly as it would have been if you did have calcium. You realize that we are applying a Yaramila power, which is high in phosphorus at planting, but also later we are applying NPK, Yaramila winner, which is uh, also phosphorus. Phosphorus is very important to apply in this crop during the entire uh, period until about bulb formation. Why? This crop is not, is not deep rooted and the roots do not spread very far and wide. What does that mean? It's not able to take uh, the phosphorus as efficiently as other crops hold. Therefore, uh, when you are applying fertilizer, it's important to apply as close as it is to the, to the root system and more so phosphorus. Because then the, this plant can be able to take up the nutrients uh, in a more efficient manner when it's very close. Phosphorus, once it dissolves in the soil, does not move far away from the roots. It doesn't move, so it's hardly immobile. So therefore, this plant will not look for phosphorus elsewhere. It has to get what you've placed and that to be asked to be very close and then that's the reason why we say you have to apply this phosphorus after every short period of time at planting or transplanting then uh, at about uh, the bulbing or before bulbing then you need to apply this uh, uh, phosphorus source of uh, uh, fertilizer which is uh, which is a uh, yaramila winner it's kind of uh, greenish in color and then you alternate with uh, calcium Okay, calcium also is very important in terms of the root development and we're talking about the root tips. I don't know if you can see. If you look here, you have the root tips. These are the root tips I'm talking about. These are the finer roots that are responsible for nutrient uptake. So if we are not able to ensure that we have a lot of this, then of course the uptake of nutrients is not going to be efficient. And this is the function of calcium to make sure that we have root tips developing. Okay, this is where the nutrients are right very close here okay then uh, having spoken that it's also important to talk about uh, potassium potassium most of the potassium ends up in the leaf okay and th this potassium once we have enough in the plant it controls then the the, uh, the water uptake okay the loss or the the, re the retaining of water so then your crop becomes uh, uh, this uh, factory that manufactured uh, food. Then from most of the carbohydrates manufactured here, before bulbing, then during the bulbing they start migrating from here down here. Okay, and calcium become, uh, for, sorry potassium, it will give you the weight and it will give you the bulb size. And bulb size is a factor of uh, nitrogen, it's a factor of calcium, it's a factor of potassium mainly, and the, and the calcium. Alright, so having said that, uh, then it's important also to understand that you have to ensure that most of the foliage is is healthy okay because the more the foliage you have as i said it's like a factory that's manufacturing food is the more output you will have if you have uh leaves dying say for example this okay then you are losing okay if you lose this factory it's like a, in a factory we have 10 people who are working if three people are missing then of course the output will not be the same if those uh, three were present. So then it's, impo it's important to ensure that we maintain the leaf health for a longer period of time as we can. By the time uh, this crop is reaching about 13th leaf stage, then of course more leaves do not develop, okay, because then the crop now switches to uh, maturity, okay. Then now the most of the nutrients that were accumulated here because of the good foliage and because of the good size and the height, then start migrating to expand and feed this bulb here all right and that's why we stop fertilizing 
at uh, when bulb uh, is starting or when bulb is ongoing. We do not do that. If we continue fertilizing when the bulb is going on, then there's high chances of reducing the quality but also delaying maturity. Right? Very good. In our second session, I'll be able to show you uh, what balanced nutrition is all about and how that influences quality and the yield. Very good. Good to have heard from you and look forward for all the questions that uh, you want to ask. We'll have a Q&A uh, &A session at the end of this and we'll be able to answer most of your questions. viewers i hope you are continuing to learn and you know gather all the insights that you're able to get from our lead agronomist kefa makori really what we are trying to deliver to show you is how you can make money from the soil it's supposed to be onion farming is known to be one of one of the most very convenient crops to grow as you know as somebody who's starting out in farming and i can see all your comments coming through thick and thin and um Eva Kamene, I can see you there. I can see uh, Jeremiah, Peter, Billy Okeo, and all of you guys. But that was very nice. As, as in me, I didn't even think you, you were that ready. sharing your, your thoughts. We want to keep interacting yeah. with you just so that yeah, okay. we make sure that you get to know this experience. And if you if, if you allow me, I want to introduce to you somebody who has been in this particular <coughs> farming business. And this is actually his farm. And all that we want to demonstrate to you today is that you, our viewer, can be able to start farming and be a farmer. Please, remember to keep your questions coming. If you want to know how much acreage is this, you want to know the experience that this young man has gone through, I am very happy and privileged to introduce to you the farmer today. And he'll be here to share with us his experience, share with us how you have used Tiara Crop Nutrition. Solution is in your farm, the challenges you've gone through, and really what would be your word to fellow young people. When I visited the first time, I mean, I was really amazed at the good work that you're doing. Yeah, and thanks. so we want to really understand so that our viewers at home, who are viewing us from wherever they're viewing us, can get to learn and get the experience of how you have managed to have such a beautiful farm. Okay, Karibu thanks. sana. Just introduce yourself, where we are at, and anything else that you want to share with us. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, welcome, Yara, to this farm. My name is Eric. And uh, this, uh, here is uh, we're in Kitengela, 
precisely a place called Kisaju, some few kilometers to Isinya. And um, I'm really glad that you visited this farm. Uh, not just for, I've, I've, me myself, I've also used the Yara products and they are quite okay. They are, they are good actually. Uh, in planting we used Yara power, yeah. Top dressing we used Yara sulfur and uh, at the 65 days mark we used uh, Yara winner. Yeah, uh, about the experiencing uh, the experience in farming. Yeah, it's a business like any other. Yeah, where you have to devote yourself, you have to plan, you have to get uh, to know some things here and there, so that you can have a successful venture. Yeah. Uh, what can, what else can I share? Probably share with us if at all there are any if, if at all there are any other challenges you've got in your farm. How did you start? You know, because yeah. probably the question most people are asking to today is, I'm a young man. I want to start farming. How do I start? How did you start your farming? Oh, okay, my my experience. Okay, my main business I buy and sell onions. I'm into the onion business. So through going through other farms round, I got to know some things here and there, and uh, I was really interested in into farming. So just to start with, you know, the main, the main factors of production is land and water, right. and uh, which is quite expensive to have. Or if you are if you are young, younger, you're starting from scratch. Right. So I began by leasing. I leased the, I've leased this land. Yeah. The, there's water. There's enough water for production. Right. Uh, the other challenge is you must have a, you must have a proper knowledge of what you want to do right. and the outcome you want to have. Right. So, so that's why you have to you have to source uh, products that are really de reliable. Right. Yeah. For example, a name like Rara, it's a big yeah. name. Yeah. You know for sure, yeah. any product you get from them, it's something that is tested and tried, right. and it will not disappoint you. Right. Yeah. For example, when I did uh, when I did my planting right. with the Yara Power, right. the difference was so huge. Yeah? Because yeah. in uh, when the crop was two weeks, yeah. you when actually you were doing your uh, your sulfur and it was three weeks, yeah. you would say it, it was past, yeah, it was past that age because it it picked up really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, we thank you, you guys, for that. Thank you very much. I mean, uh, I've, I've picked really three interesting points that you've mentioned. Number yeah. one, if you're a young viewer viewing us from anywhere, you're viewing us from from home or whichever place. Land should not be a problem. Yeah. You can lease land and yeah. be able to plant. Yeah. And number two, one of the things that I've also learned from you is you need to have the knowledge. Yeah. And with Yara we say knowledge, knowledge grows. Amen. And so you need yeah. dependable partners, dependable you know, crop nutrition solutions like what we have at Yara to be able to really impact your farm. True. And lastly, you have just to work. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. So probably as we, as we probably bring this section to a close, yeah. You have leased the farm, it's beautiful now. Yeah. Are you getting the returns for the good work that you put yeah, in? Yeah. That's the question probably somebody is asking. Yeah, you us see now. you see one thing with farming. Farming, uh, if you want to do commercial farming, it's not really about the price. That's uh -huh. where people get it wrong. Right. Farming is about the output. Right. Yeah. For example, when you you are doing onion, right now the prices of onion they are not that good. Right. But once you hit that tonnage of fifteen tons plus, right. yeah, you can Onions is one of the, it's, it's uh, very hard for you to, to incur losses while right. doing it, yeah? yeah? Because the output is always big, yeah? yeah for yeah. example, uh, like right now we are getting an output of 15 tons plus per yeah. acre. You know, if you do that plus, if you multiply by whatever price you get, right. provided it's not below 30, right. you are surely going to... We are surely going to get something on top, and you know seasons don't 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 are not the same. Right. There are some seasons that are high, there are some seasons that are low, right. and that's what, those are one of the few th major things you should know while doing onions. Like for example, me while doing this crop, I knew, right. I knew for sure between uh, August and November, right. the prices are not that fair. For sure. But I knew where to. I I have to work on my tonnage. Right. If I get the right tonnage, I'll surely get something. Yeah. Uh -huh. But now, when you go during the high seasons, eh, right. there are also other challenges doing there. Right. The high seasons from, uh, let me say, from January onwards up to mid-May, yeah. you'll get a, fair, a good price, actually, not even right. a fair price. Right. Uh, from, from that, even uh, you say, me, on my part, I say, 
the price rewards that those that have gotten the best output. Oh. If you get a high tonnage right. and a good price, you are better off. For sure. If you get a high tonnage and the prices are not that good, right. you still get you'll still get your money back. Right. Yeah. So the primary thing is production. How do you production make production sure production you have the right production? And I think I mean I, I agree with you because once you have the right production, yeah. Somebody could probably be, you know, having an, an onion farm somewhere. True. Probably is getting five tons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yourself, because of that good agricultural practice that you're yeah, doing, yeah. because of that, you know, the good products that you're using, just like you said, yeah. tried and tested products, you're yeah, able yeah. to get the tonnage of yeah. up to 15 tons. Yeah, minimum 15. Yeah. Up to, they're like the, up there we are getting around 19 tons per acre. Right. Yeah. yeah. The area that uh, was a bit, the, was didn't do so well, we got around uh, 14. Okay. Yeah? yeah. But these other areas, they are doing well. They are doing over 15. So, averagely, you... Not, for, it's for around you, 17 tons. 17 tons. Yeah. I mean, our dear viewer at home, the point we are belaboring to tell you is that farming, there is money in the soil, but you have to use the right products, you have to have the right knowledge, True. and you have to have the commitment to be a farmer and yeah. really to make sure that... You, at the production level or at the production unit, you're able to produce optimally. And yeah. that's what our brother yeah. is belaboring to tell us. So, I yeah. mean, lastly, as we probably clo close this, oh. you have worked with Yara on this farm. Yeah. What is the two things that you'd say if anybody asked you about Yara today? Ah, okay, one thing, yeah? Yeah. The, there's this thing, there's this product that I had not seen about Yara before, Yara right. Boost. Yeah, Yara Vita. Yeah, Yara Vita, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that thing really helped uh, the, this this onion, yeah? yeah. Because we applied it when it was around 10, 10 days to fourteen days, yeah. Yeah, yeah it it really helps the, the you know uh, when you transplant, right. That uh, you've changed the environment for the for the for the onion, right. So it is not exactly how it was uh, from the nursery. Yeah. So your boost gives it. What what can I say? It just gives it a boost. A boost, yeah. yeah it resuscitates faster right. and it starts picking faster. Right. So Yara Boost was quite a thing for me. Right. And uh, also Yara Power for planting. Ah. Let me just say Yara, Yara products are okay. Yara they are products good. are okay. Yeah, they are good. They're not right. okay, they are good, yeah. I mean, you've heard it from the horse's mouth himself. Yeah. Having seen how beautiful this crop is, it's all because of the good agricultural practices, the good products tried and tested yeah. from Yara that he's used. And so, I don't know what you're waiting for. Get into the next agrovet close to you. Look for your other products. Yeah. There are a whole range of different products for onions. Yeah. If you want more information on that, of course, be sure to visit Yara Kenya, Face I mean, Yara Kenya Facebook page, Yara Kenya on Twitter, on all social media platforms, and be able to interact with us and get more information from us. Yeah. We want to go on a short commercial break, but when we come back, we have so much more packed for you. Probably you have just seen the beauty of how the crops have grown. We want to show you really now the outcome of all of this the substance of this conversation and so stick to your stick to your screen or to your phone and be sure to join us after this commercial break
welcome back our our viewers from home and uh we are back and we want to really show you how beautiful i was saying uh before that uh, technical hitch i was saying that at transplanting apply yaramila power 100 kg per acre then after the third leaf has begun uh, then towards going towards the fourth fifth leaf apply yarabella sulfan high nitrate nitrogen fertilizer with sulfur and why nitrate nitrogen is the form of nitrogen that's very friendly to crops and that's what crops prefer except few that that uh, prefer ammonium maybe like a uh, uh, like um, tea, but in this case, nitrate nitrogen works for this crop. Then, as we move further towards bulbing or the beginning of bulbing, then we need to apply Yaramila Wina. Yaramila Wina is very complete with all the micronutrients, secondary and primary nutrients. <coughs> it's very rich in potassium, and the potassium at this point of when we are when it's bulbing stage, we are looking at increasing the bulb weight and the bulb size. And, that's, and in that uh, winner, we have the nitrogen, we have the phosphorus, which I say this crop does not have very fibrous root system, but they are very close to their root system, to their soil. And therefore, there is need to apply, every time you apply this NPK winner, it has the phosphorus, which is a driver, actually, of yield and most of the functions, metabolic functions in the plant. Then, we have to apply Yaraliva nitrable, which is a very rich source of calcium, and in this case, 100% uh, water soluble calcium, all right. And there's a there's a belief normally in the market that when you apply uh, CN, it has calcium. No, the calcium form in CN is not water available. If it's not water, if it's not uh, water soluble, it's not plant soluble. So then the plants will never get a calcium. But yarrow liver gives you boron, which is very critical. Boron and uh, helps the uh, efficient uptake and usage of nitrogen in the plant. And with calcium. Wow. Then you are talking about the shelf life. After harvesting, you have no market. What do you, what do, you do? You need to store your crop. You can store it for three, five months without a problem if calcium is in that. All right. But more importantly, uh, this crop, I say, uh, requires frequent feeding. And the foliar becomes a key component of that. Yara, Yara Vita Crop Boost is a very efficient foliar with very high phosphorus and a zinc with added advantage of calcium, of sorry, of potassium and magnesium. Now, voila, here we are. Let's see. We've spoken about the importance of balanced nutrition and the fertilizer or this onion at the right time to enhance bulb development, size, weight, but more so shelf life. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to slit it open and see if this is what we expected and I'll give it here to Erko Chen to see. The better the compaction of this uh, uh, of these scales, the better, the firmer it becomes. And that if you have enough calcium in here, because calcium has to go into, into these uh, rings uh, of uh, skin or scales and that preserves the shelf life. But the compact that it becomes the denser it becomes, you can see when you ap apply some pressure, it's not going to collapse. And that improves the shelf life. And this is what farmers uh, want to see. But the client, the ultimate client, be it the hotel industry or be it someone at home, and this is what they want to see. Very good. So, now, how did we arrive here? Some people say, when you use fertilizer, it doesn't work for me. Why should it not work? If you do the right thing, you follow the right uh, uh, program that we have prescribed and I said it comes from 115 years of research plus so please don't neglect that more than 115 years of research of producing the best fertilizer if it was Saka it would be a Ferrari alright and because of that we produce the best quality of onion not only onion but even other crops very good as you can see here now at this stage, uh, the crop does not require any nutrient, but even water has been withdrawn so that it can dry nicely and it can be taken up now to the store for storage or it can be sold. 
Now, you can, as you can see, it's very cloudy and it's about to rain. But because of uh, Eric, Eric Oche, whose womb we call him Yara Shuja, yeah, because he deserves to be a Yara Shuja, he's not worried. Why? Because he has, in his phone, he has an application called Yara Farm Weather. Yara Farm Weather helps you to understand the weather pattern. When is it going to rain and how much is it going to rain? That helps you to make decisions in terms of how to harvest or not, do I need to harvest or not. Like now, it shows that by 25th, it's going to rain here. So it's not worried. Despite the clouds, you can comfortably sleep and harvest this crop maybe tomorrow, if, that, if that's what, what you want. So I urge you to embrace the Yara digital technology, which uh, is in plenty, <coughs> like Yara farm weather. But we also have Yara tank mix. If you have chemicals and, pest, and pesticides and the Yara foliar, you are not sure if you need to apply together or, or separately, just visit Yara website, Yara uh, web, uh, tank mix, that app, and mix there, and you'll get the results about compatibility. And you go ahead and do that. Now, I mentioned, I'm not going to repeat again, I talked about this, I find it very critical to talk about this water is coming very becoming very scarce and especially our our Yara Shuja, Mr. Eriko Che, is using borehole water. So in this case it doesn't need to irrigate too much. Okay, that's a waste of water. Water is a, a very valuable commodity in this farm. So with the with the little uh, with the amount of water that he's getting, he's able to utilize well because he understands about the root system, the depth, you know, and the efficiency of uptake of nutrients and water, so it's not wasting water. I've seen in some places where, especially they use basin irrigation, they apply fertilizer, come up with water. That's not the efficient way of doing it. Given that this crop now we understand is very shallow rooted, you know, the nutrients have to be very close to their roots. So what you should do instead is apply the, uh, the water in your basin, if that's your mode of uh, irrigation, then after uh, the watering, then come apply your nutrients so that they are not washed beyond the root zones. In such way, you will be able to laugh all the way to the bank, like Mr. Eric is going to be. Right, so having spoken that, uh, at this point, as much as you are seeing this crop this way, that the, the tops are falling over, but it's still it's still growing. How is it growing? The nutrients that were stored here, the carbohydrates, all those that were stored here during the time of vegetative growth is still now going down to increase the bulb size. So, if you remove your crop very early, then of course you, uh, you interfere with the size. Thank you very much and show you after the, see you after the break. Thank you very much. I mean, just before we go for the break, I want to just emphasize on what, uh, on what Mr. Kefa Makori has said. If you can just come with me, the cameraman, and look at the bulb sizes that we have here. I was speaking to Eric when I visited his farm, and he, was, he told me that three of that can give him one kilo. Yeah. Mm. That's exactly what we're talking about. Improving your productivity and improving your yield. That's what Yara is all about. And so we have had questions and comments coming through very thick and thin. And uh, just to read a few of them, we have Royal Prince who said, I would like Yara to recommend the best fertilizer for onions, which I think uh, uh, the regional agronomist, Mr. Kefa Makori, has belabored to mention all of them all the way. But we can be able to share with you the crop nutrition program. Just feel free to, you know, send us a message on Yara Kenya on Facebook. We also have Elijah Choge who is saying, great Yara, we appreciate your efforts in, up in uplifting young farmers, Hongera Sana. Thank you very much, Mr. Elijah, for your warm words. Again, we have Mary Nzioka, who is saying, good presentation. We have Jeremiah Peter, who is saying, knowledge grows by sharing. Appreciate the presentation. Kudos. I mean, we have lots and lots of comments and questions. Mr. Jojo Court, good presentation following. Thank you. Daniel Ngodo, great tips, thank you very much. Billy Okeo, following. Probably I take one of the questions from Angela, from Angela Ngede, and is directing this to Eric. That could Eric share a few details, like the acreage he has, C 
seed variety, production cost estimates. Once we take that question, then we'll take you on a tour of the farm. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, uh, this, variety, this variety is Neptune F1. Yeah. And uh, about the, the size of this farm is, uh, the once we are doing onions, is three acres. Yeah. And uh, about the cost. Uh, you see, the direct cost of, uh, of, nini, of uh, fungicides and pesticides is roughly 40,000 yeah, per acre. And then uh, there, is, uh, there are the fertilizers, what, 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 they cover roughly 65 to 70,000. And then now there is uh, labor. So let's say uh, with a region of 200 to 250, 200K, you should do an acre. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so there you have it. But you know the cost comes down with it. You know, if you incur 200k in one acre, yes. it does not mean you incur 400 in two. Right. It ma the, it's called economies, uh, of economies of Yeah, exactly. Right. So it will come a little bit, lower. a little bit lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So we just want to take, um, you know, a tour of the farm, and you'll lead us. Yeah. You know, just share, show us your farm as we, you know, bring this to a close. Yeah. And please, if you have more questions, just keep sharing or asking your questions. We have our very able team that will be handling all of your questions online and giving you all the answers that you need yeah so thanks so basically this is the crop that is ready there's the first batch up there which you've already harvested okay this is the second batch here yeah. and this is the third batch uh -oh. that uh we are we are we are yet to harvest so this one is ready yeah. we're just giving it some few days to cure right and then we'll, uh, we'll harvest it yep. yeah as jeff has shown you already yeah, yeah. As we, as we go along, I, I, I hear sometimes people come with drums and roll over. What would be the reason uh, for that? That is quite, uh, it's not the proper way of uh, farming. Right. Because you see, bulbing, bulbing yeah? yeah? So you, you try and make it mature earlier. Yeah. yeah? But when you just do proper nini, it will just, the, the leaves will just fall by themselves. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this crop, you know, it has a, a life cycle. Yeah. Okay. There's a, 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 a number of days that it has to stay here yeah. before then, uh, of course, it uh, ages and maybe dies, the tops die. Right. So you do not need to kind of uh, uh, force right. uh, it to go into, ma into maturity. Yeah. Okay. Let the natural uh, process follow its course. Mm. And then, of course, as I said, even at this point already, there is yeah. still. Uh, I still increase their size and uh, and underweight. Yeah. You know, because some of the nutrients uh, from the leaves here are being uh, transported to the plant. Yeah. All right. So yeah. instead of coming and forcing it, so me, uh, like the, some people do, they twist and yeah. means you stop yeah. that transportation of nutrients uh, from the leaf yeah. to the bulb. the bulb. And of course, you interfere with the bulb size right. and the weight and all those things. Right. So there's no need to do it. At on the right time, yeah. it will fall over. On a light note, Kefa, the last time we visited, I had uh, you say that, you know, bachelors require the small size, <laughs> the small size onion. <laughs> so, I don't know, here we are seeing, you know, both variety of the small size, the medium and the large sizes. How is that in the market? How does it play out? Uh, for me, it depends on, on your market. Yeah, so, true. You know, it, true. It, like his market, it's in the supermarkets, this hotel, mm. where they require uh, mm, huge, big sizes. Uh, size of... Uh, of uh, onions. Of bulbs. Yeah. I mean, for instance, not worry. Yeah. So, if I'm growing for the bachelors, as you rightly say, then there's something that I'll do. And in that case, I'll be able to uh, reduce put the, the spacing yeah. as close as possible right. so that they don't have more room for expansion. But even then, I can even reduce the amount of nutrients yeah, and the water as well. Oh. Then I'll achieve the small size that the bachelors prefer. Mm. Right. Yeah. So, I think the most important thing in our view we are saying is know your market. Yeah. Once you know your market, you're able to know how and what you need to do to be able to achieve what you want. Yeah, so true. Cut. Actually, on spacing, spacing is very important on uh, tonnage. Yeah. You know, the spacing you have determines the population you'll put per acre. Right. So, the higher the population and give it the right space, yeah, yeah. you get the, high, the, the highest tonnage. Yeah? Yeah. For example, for us here, we do a space of 10. Eh? Yeah. These drips are of 20 centimeters. Yeah. We put onion at the drip. Are the space are the drip are the space oh. so that way you see for example you get onion of this size yeah. you see this these three are big right. these two are medium yeah. and you find this one is small oh. so that way they that way you find uh, it really helps yeah right yeah true oh, thank you very much okay as we as we come to a close I wanted to 
you know, just as we continue to talk about you know, the crop can be of the good of the practices, yeah. probably here yeah, we have in terms of uh, one of the mistakes that you ever did when you are doing your onions. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the one of the one of the mistakes I did yeah. was uh, there was a day I was going to buy a uh, a pesticides. It's yeah. called uh, Otran. Yeah. But you know, uh, when I said Otran at the counter, yeah. it's like the the, uh, the they are called the people the person at the counter had Otiva. Oh. You see, Otran and Otiva they are almost same. Yeah. And actually, we used Otiva and uh, they were two. Otiva is a fungicide. Yeah. Mm. But Otran is a pesticide. Right. So you find we mixed uh, two two. Two, fun two fungicides, yeah? yeah. So on that day we didn't have any pesticide, yeah. and at the same time it it, it gave the the onion some some scar scorching. Just some scorching, because yeah. the concentration was too high. Yeah. yeah so so that, that and the, you know my guys when I to when you when you give them an instruction, yeah. that's why they follow. <laughs> yeah. So that's one right. of the challenges. Yeah. Uh, mm. I think one of the things that uh, Kefa did mention and labored to mention is that the leaves or the vegetative of this is the factory. Okay, when you look at these leaves, what would you make of them? You know, if you look at the, the size of the leaf, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's this kind of height. Yeah. But it's also, also broad. Yeah. Right. So that tells you it's going, the output is going to be higher. Right. If you have smaller leaves and uh, short in length, and of course they are not going to give you uh, the output. From right. this, I can tell you, it's really going to have uh, bulbs that are probably maybe 200 grams, easily yeah. 150, 200, 300 yeah. grams mm -hmm. like that. There are some cases you see very small yeah. uh, leaves and you wonder how is it going really even to uh, give you the output and that's why you end up with the very tiny ones right. that even the tannage is not there, yeah. that even the price is not there and you even regret. Yeah. But one thing that I really mentioned and I must mention here uh, is about Yara liver uh, nitrable which is 100% water soluble calcium. Right. Calcium is very key if you are growing onions. Okay. They are very susceptible to insect pests, especially the thrips. And also they are very susceptible to diseases like uh, purple, purple blotch yeah. and downy mildew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you do, if you don't have that calcium in the system, then the, the, cell, the cell wall of these leaves becomes very thin and very weak. And the cell membrane as well. Yeah. So then it, it makes it attractive for insect pests and it is diseases to attack and spread very quickly. Yeah. But if you have calcium in the system, it's like uh, you have a barrier. You cannot run through a barrier. Yeah. I mean, you have to be stopped mm. before you enter that barrier. Cool. And that's what happens. It becomes a barrier to diseases and to insect pests. Yeah. But again, apart from that, it gives you the advantage of long life storage, yeah. which is what people need. Yeah, true. You, know, you don't want uh, to buy like uh, maybe 20 onions, you know, yeah. uh, or, or a net full of onion, yeah. and uh, maybe one week down the road, I mean, they are all rotten. Yeah, true. That's what you want to avoid. Mm. Mm. And calcium, very important. Your liver, like and don't be again, don't be misadvised that you see N, it's called calcium ammonium nitrate, but it has the calcium in there does not work. It's uh, not water soluble. Yeah. I rather advise you buy your liver nitrate. That's why on that bag of CN we don't write or we don't claim uh, percentage of calcium on the bag. Mm -hmm. right. And for Yara, what's on the bag is in the bag. Yeah. Sure. Thank you very much. I think I really love that line. What's in the bag? It's in the bag. <laughs> it's in the bag for sure. True. Probably so somebody has seen us walk through and is wondering what are these, you know, what are these maize for? Uh, these maize are just windbreakers, yeah? Right. They really don't have any big commercial value. Right. But they are just windbreakers, yeah? Yeah. They have no harm. So it just, it just adds something to the nini, right. to the farm, yeah. Yeah. As you can see, if you look at the whole maize plantation here, yeah. We'll have quite some harvest, yeah? yeah. And you really, there's no additional cost to it. Right. They just consume what you put right. in, the, in the onions. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's uh, only that at the early stages, you just have to look for those army homes, eh? Right. And you just take care of them. From there, you're okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I just want to read a few more comments from our viewers. Um, I mean, thank you very much for sticking around with us. Thank you very much for being part of this, you know, live event. And really we thank you and we value you and it, it is for this reason that Yara has committed to bring knowledge to you and not only to your phone but to you so that you can be like Eric and have a good harvest as this using Yara Crop Nutrition Solution. Mm. I want to read from Kemboi. 
La Baxter, we saying great knowledge shared, Yara, shared. Yara products the best, giving farmers to always smile out of their, out of their outputs from the farm. Mm. We also have Joan Mbugwa, who, who is saying great work, Eric Anunda saying great work, and really to all our viewers who joined us, thank you and thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate you. Probably I will take, you know, last comments from Eric, you know, anything that you may tell our viewers about Yara, about your experience. So just the last thing that if I gave you a one second ticket yeah. that you'd say. <laughs> okay, I, ca I can say for sure, like many people say, Yara is a sure bet. Mm -hmm. You cannot lose when you, when you put your money on Yara. Right. True. Thank you very much. I think that was <laughs> short and sweet. Yara is a sure bet. I do not know what else you're waiting for our viewer. Probably mm -hmm. I, I leave it for Kefa Makori to tell us of what they make of Ayara Digital Shuja, like Eric, when you visit the farm. What could be, would be your last words on onion farming and really to Eric as Ayara Digital Shuja? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ronald. Uh, Eric is Ayara Shuja. We have worked with Eric for quite a number of years, uh, not because that uh, uh, we picked him, but because uh, we saw potential in him and he really follows what we advise. He does not want to experiment because you leave that experimentation to us. That's what we do yeah. uh, in making fertilizer, in recommending the fertilizer program. We do all those experiments. So he follows what we tell him and that's how far he's come. And because of that, we made him Ayara Shuja. And Ayara Shuja means uh, Eric, uh, he gets some reward from Yara, some recognition. And apart from that, Eric becomes a focal point for other farmers to learn from the neighborhood. And because of that, uh, Eric has been getting uh, several farmers and they continue to get more farmers to learn from him. And I, I think I can urge uh, uh, people or the young people who want to work with us, even if it's the old, and they are doing something great, you can always, all, all, uh, always reach um, to us and we'll be able to come and help you and probably uh, show you what else you can do. Right. Thank you. I mean, thank yeah. you very much, gentlemen. Really, I appreciate all our viewers. I appreciate our teacher, Kefa. Actually, I read one of the comments here saying, Asante sana molimu kefa. So we thank you very much for the knowledge. We thank you also for the experience. And also just sharing with us how we need to understand what I would say the language of an onion Amen. using Yara in nutrition solution. True, true. And to our brother Eric, I mean, thank you for inviting us. The last time we visited, you sent an invitation to us again. We came, we did, and we conquered. Amen. Thank you very true. much to all of us. Mm -hmm. Until next time, keep it Yara. Keep following Yara on Yara at Yara Kenya on Facebook, at Yara Kenya on Twitter, at Yara Kenya on Instagram. Share with us all your experiences. If you are having a farm now, growing anything with Yara products, please share with us your experience and we might be on your farm next. Who knows? And again, remember, if it's Yara, it's all about innovation, innovation, innovation for you to have improved productivity and improved income. Remember to go to your Play Store download the yara farm weather app download the yara tank mix and yara check it all of which are you know by yara for free to be able to help you as a farmer optimally produce thank you very much until next time see you, thank you. okay thank you thank you